Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for being here tonight. So this is the public meeting for the Southern Region Emergency Operations Center Project Draft Environmental Impact Report. Um, let me first give you an overview. Uh, first, we're gonna talk about the purpose of a public meeting. I'm gonna go over a overview of the description of the proposed project. We're gonna talk about the environmental review process and I'll explain where we are in that process and what's already happened. Um, I'm gonna go over a summary of the results of the impact assessments that are included in the draft document. Uh, then we're gonna have a comment period, we're gonna have public comments. So I will, actually that will come at the end. We're gonna, we're gonna have public comments for anyone who wants to provide an oral comment tonight. There, you can also provide written comments uh, either through the website or through the comment card. So if you don't feel comfortable speaking, you can be heard in, in other ways, but anyone uh, who wants to speak is free to do so. And then at the end of the presentation, I will leave up the contact information for uh, the website and how to submit comments. Um, and it's coming up soon, but I will introduce myself now because it's a couple slides out. My name is Laura Masterson. I'm the project manager for DUDEC. We are the environmental consulting firm who is supporting the state uh, in doing the environmental assessment for this project. So the purpose of this meeting is to provide a background on the project. I'm gonna outline the California Environmental Quality Act or CEQA process, summarize the results, and then we're gonna, provide, we're gonna have a public comment period. Uh, so one of the main purposes of CEQA is to uh, emphasize public participation. So we are required to disclose potential impacts of the project and public participation and comments are encouraged. Um, so I'm gonna give the overview and, and then turn it over to you. You can, as I said, provide comments in writing or orally. Um, and the final EIR will include written responses to every comment received in writing. So that makes up the majority of the final EIR. Okay, so key players in the CEQA process. Cal OES, which is the Governor's Office of Emergency Services, they are the lead agency pursuant to CEQA. So every project under CEQA has a lead, lead agency identified. The Department of General Services, DGS, is another state agency who is supporting Cal OES in the development of the project. And then DUDEC, which is who I work for, we are the consulting firm that is helping the state with uh, doing the environmental assessment for the project. Okay, so quickly I'm gonna go over the project objectives. That's a really important part of the, of the environmental document is to explain what the objectives are that the project is trying to achieve. So the goal is to establish a regional emergency operations center, center, that's what EOC stands for, to act as a backup facility to the existing state operations center, which is up in uh, Mather, which is in Northern California. Um, another goal is to establish a regional EOC within Cal OES's southern region. So the southern region covers 11 counties within Southern California. Um, it, another objective is to meet uh, Cal OES's mission and program needs, meet the requirements of the California Essential Services Building Seismic Safety Act, provide emergency preparedness educational opportunities, strategically locate the new EOC within a metropolitan area pop, uh, slash population center and near readily available major surface transportation systems and a major airport. Sorry, I went backward. <laughs> um, continuing on the objectives. Uh, the next one is to cite the EOC on property that is removed from high traffic public areas and which can be completely enclosed by perimeter fencing for controlled access and security purposes. Uh, to design and operate a sustainable facility and to design an EOC that meets all program needs within the smallest practicable footprint. And lastly, to effectively use state-owned land not currently used or underutilized for existing or ongoing state programs. So um, 
the Fairview Developmental Center is being decommissioned and is um, not really being used much right now. Okay, so now we're gonna get into just kind of an overview of the project. This map shows uh, the project location. It's located on 15 acres within the uh, southwest corner of the, of the uh, Fairview Developmental Center property. Um, we are currently about like right there. So we're, we're near the project site. Um, and then the, uh, in addition to the 15 acre site, there will also be um, some roadway improvements and a new roadway section to uh, connect to Harbor Boulevard. So the existing project site, as I said, it's 15, approximately 15 acres within the Fairview Developmental Center, um, which is currently being decommissioned. And one thing to note about the property is that it is eligible for inclusion on the National Register of Historic Places and the California Register of Historic Resources as a historic district. So the property as a whole is eligible as a historic district. Okay, so the project is, uh, this is just, you know, the high level about what the project includes. There's two structures being proposed, an approximately 35,000 square foot office building. That is, where's my pointer? That is this building right here. Uh, a 20,000 square foot warehouse, which is down here. And then other associated improvements, uh, including some outbuildings and fencing, a 120 foot radio tower. It's actually 100 feet with 20 feet of um, equipment on the top for a total height of 120 feet. There is a helipad, which is located right here. Um, there's uh, PV panels, battery storage, and emergency generators, stormwater and utilities, and parking and landscaping. So the CEQA environmental review. The purpose of CEQA is to inform decision makers and the public of proposed projects and their potential environmental effects. Um, and to identify ways to avoid or reduce potential impacts through feasible mitigation measures or alternatives to the project and to increase public understanding and participation in the environmental review, review process. So we appreciate you all being here tonight and involving yourself in the process. Okay, so now I'm just gonna briefly go over how the process works. So first we distributed a notice of preparation and that goes out for a 30 day review period. That was from March 1st through March 31st, so earlier this year. We had a public scoping meeting during that public review period, which was held on March 13th. After that, we looked at those any comments that were received and we prepared the draft DIR. So that's what's been happening in that uh, interceding time. Then we prepared a public notice and draft EIR, uh, notice of avail availability for the draft DIR. So that went out on September 5th, that was the start of the public, the 45 day public comment period. So during that time, uh, you hold a public meeting and that's where we are tonight. So you'll see the little check mark, that's this. So we are holding the public meeting on here, September 28th. After that, the public review period will continue through October 20th, so 45 days total. And anyone who wants to can submit comments all the way through the end of that comment period. Once all the comments are collected and the comment period is closed, we will review all the comments and make any necessary changes to the document, provide res written responses to all comments received, and that will constitute the final EIR. And then the final EIR will be reviewed, um, and a decision will be made about whether to move forward with the project, and that's how the process works. <laughs> okay, so very quickly, I'm gonna go over the environmental resources that were addressed in detail in the draft EIR. We uh, addressed aesthetics, which means the visuals of the project, air quality, biological resources, cultural and tribal cultural resources, energy, greenhouse gas emissions, hazards and hazardous materials, hydrology and water quality, land use and planning, noise, paleontological resources, 
public services, transportation, and utilities and service systems. Resource areas that were determined not to have the potential for a significant impact and were therefore not analyzed in detail in the document are agriculture and forestry resources, geology and soils, excluding paleontology, that's included in the geology chapter, mineral resources, population and housing, recreation and wildfire. Um, and here's a summary of the impacts that were determined to be less than significant. Aesthetics, energy, greenhouse gas emissions, hydrology and water quality, land use and planning, noise, public services, transportation, and utilities and service systems. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of text on these next couple of slides because we've listed out all the mitigation measures that we've included in the document to reduce impacts of the project. Um, I'm not going to go through well, I can at least read the name. So for air quality, we have a mitigation measure that requires a tier four final uh, energy uh, emergency generators. For biological resources, we are the mitigation will be for burrowing, burrowing owl surveys, pre-construction surveys for special status species, and nesting bird surveys. For cultural and tribal cultural resources, we will have enhanced recordation of the uh, historic structures that are part of the historic district. That means you take very detailed photos um, before demolition of any of the, the, the buildings. We will have cultural resources monitoring and a discovery plan and a WEEP, which is a worker environmental awareness program. So anyone working on the project site would be made aware of the potential for uh, resources. We will uh, retain an on-call archaeologist and an archaeological monitor. There will be a clause for inadvertent discovery of resources that we may not have anticipated being there. Uh, there will be Native American monitors, and there is a measure uh, for specific measures related to the inadvertent discovery of uh, tribal cultural resources and the unanticipated discovery of tribal cultural, cultural objects, which are not um, funerary or ceremonial objects. Uh, for hazards and hazardous materials, uh, there will be, uh, there's a mitigation measure for pre-demolition hazardous materials abatement. These are old structures, so um, things were built with different materials <laughs> back in the 50s. Um, and then for paleontological resources, there will be, um, an impact mitigation program and paleontological monitoring during ground disturbing activities. Okay, so when you do an EIR, you are required to assess alternatives to the proposed project. So in our CEQA document, we uh, analyze three alternatives. The first is the no project alternative, which is required under CEQA. You have to analyze basically what would happen if the project didn't move forward. So that's the first alternative. Alternative two is a reduced project, which would reduce the building square footage, the square footages by half, uh, which would also result in a reduction in the uh, project footprint of, it would re be reduced by 1.75 acres. And all the other project elements would remain the same in that uh, alternative. And then alternative three was an alternative site. A potential site was identified in Tustin, which met initial screening criteria. There was a rigorous screening criteria process that the state went through. And it was, it's a 24 acre site um, at Red Hill Avenue and Victory Road, but it's a not a state owned property. And the project proposed there would be the same project as is proposed for this project. And that was, you have to identify an environmentally superior alternative. This uh, alternative three was identified as the superior alternative because it wouldn't involve the demolition of historic buildings. Okay, so now that's the end of the, the information I'm gonna be providing and we're gonna go into the public comment section. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit about how that's gonna work. Um, and this slide will remain up for the remainder of the time we're here, so you can take down the address or, you know, the, the website or the email uh, mailing address and send comments uh, before, oct or before 6 o'clock on October 20th. That's the close of the comment period. So we are going to be limiting comments to three minutes. Someone will be 
you want to raise your hand? We're going to, Eric's going to be uh, take, uh, recording time. He will put his hand up when you have 30 seconds left, and he'll give you a wave when your three minutes are up, okay? We, uh, that's what this uh, microphone is for. So we are just going to have people stand at the microphone and give their comments. And comments should be limited to the content of the environment, the EIR. Um, it's, it's not really a, a dialogue. It's more just you, you say your comments, we record them, and we re respond to them in the final document. Um, so you're very comfortable with what all those acronyms mean, but can you go over again who's the decision-making body? Uh, Cal, oh, here. Let, why don't I put that slide back up for a minute? Yes, and please state your name when you're making a comment. My name is Leah. Thank you, Leah. Okay, so... Cal OES, which is the Governor's Office of Emergency Services. They are the lead agency responsible for implementing the project and making a decision on whether or not to proceed with the project. They are also being supported by the Department of General Services, um, which is another state agency. So they're working together. My question was very directly, where is the public supervision and oversight of those agencies? Do you want to, anyone want to speak to the, the process for approving the project? No, it's not a process for approving. It's where's the public supervision for those divisions and departments of the state? The, pub, the public has a right to know, to be involved, to have decision-making capability, not just having a disclosure of what they're doing and giving, collecting and writing down people's comments. The public has a right to have an input into the decision making of where the resources that come from are paid property taxes that go into the state. So my question again is, where is the public supervision and oversight of so, these state departments? So this is um, really a time to be collecting comments, not really answering yeah, those that. kind of procedural I heard that. questions. So I, I very your comment heard is that. being. Um, so what we want to know recorded. is not a comment. We want an answer. I think all these people here deserve to understand and know how the public has a way of having an input into the decision making of how these resources are allocated and decided. So I'm, I'm being told that it's the Public Works Board that approves the funding for the projects. The, it's, it's a complicated answer, but I'll, I'll try to make it uh, simple and direct, sorry. Uh, Jason Kenny, I uh, represent the Department of General Services there. So the project itself um, goes through a variety of um, public approval processes. So the CEQA is a venue, um, but the project went through two different budget cycles uh, approved by the legislature, but technically uh, OES and DGS are executive branch departments. Um, after the CEQA process is done, yes, OES does get to make the decision to approve, deny, or make a CEQA compliant modification to the project. Um, there is always the opportunity to, you know, lobby the department uh, itself, uh, write the governor's office, uh, advocate to your uh, representative state uh, assembly member and uh, senator, but technically there is no uh, public, it's, it's not like a city council meeting where there's a, uh, a public forum and a vote. It is something that OES does have legal authority to decide and approve. Yeah, so my, my name is Mark, uh, I live in Costa Mesa. So uh, I, I just have a few comments. So first, just for the, the group here, I was at the March meeting at the Balearic Community Center, and, and this already exists in Southern California at the Los Alamitos Joint, Joint Forces Base. So this is moving it to the Fairview Developmental Center. That's just some context, by the way. Um, I would really encourage this to be done at Tustin instead of Costa Mesa for a couple reasons. One is this is a housing opportunity site that HCD, both, both HCD and our city council have defined this as a housing opportunity site. So I'm looking at the OES and the GGS people. That's your fellow HCD, that's, that's your fellow co-equal uh, you know, government agency, uh, sorry, uh, departmental agency. 
And so uh, I, I encourage in the, the, four, the three alternatives, there is a no build alternative. That no build alternative should include whether there's actually housing built because that is the alternative. That's the, the no build of a, of a OES center is actually housing being built. I'm, gonna, I'm looking into uh, like a uh, one bedroom apartment here in Costa Mesa. It's almost $3,000 a month almost $3,000 a month, and we're trying to build affordable housing here, and we're trying to build a, uh, uh, an OES center, this OES center that already exists in NorCal. We're building a superfluous one in Southern California. Use the Tustin site. I'd also encourage, in terms of the CEQA analysis, to do a VMT analysis, to do VMT analysis of whether the vehicle miles traveled of the people working at the OES center, and on top of that, do the wages of the people who are working there match the af housing affordability of living in Costa Mesa or in Orange County as a whole? Because then we're going to have people living in Riverside and driving into Costa Mesa because they can't afford Orange County because the housing and rent is too damn high. That is the issues with this pro problem. Uh, do this in Tustin. Those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, my name is Sandy, and I have briefly looked at a few parts of the EIR online, but I have by no means done any kind of exhaustive reading of it, and I was terribly disappointed in it. Number one, I thought it was shocking that this EIR is not going to have any discussion of population and housing in light of the city's general plan and the state's ongoing plans to put housing on this site in the past. Um, number two, biology. Um, totally missed the boat there. You, you refer to the open space on site as fragmented and pretty much not used for, for anything. It actually is immediately contiguous to a thousand acres of open space, including open space that has been protected by the federal government because of the endangered species. And you think there's, it's just fragmented habitat that, that is not worth anything. I personally have observed numerous raptors on the site, numerous prey species, and it's appalling, the, the level of analysis of that topic is appalling. Particularly, I'd be really concerned about impacts on high interest sensitive species in Fairview Park due to both the lack of op the reduction in forage area, the high antenna, both in terms of height, lighting, EMF, any of those other issues. Aesthetics, what are the aesthetic impacts of this thing on Fairview Park? What are the aesthetic impacts on the golf course? Not really in mention in there. Um, a key issue is we have a cultural resource that it is on the National Register of Historical Places. It, 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 it's a sacred site. There are Indian burials, Native American burials. And one of the things, having been out with our Native peoples on the site during some of their ceremonies, one of the big issues was that they could see all of the hills, the San Gabriels, the Santa Ana Mountains, then they see down to Rancho Palos Verdes, it's called Fair View Park. And how will this antenna affect the sacred sites in Fair View Park and the sacred ceremonies in Fair View Park to put a 120 foot antenna there blocking the view of the sacred mountain. Um, also, I would urge If you I could just uh, put do a clarification on that. I did just want to let you and everyone know there there is uh, there are renderings of what the tower would look like from various on-site and off-site locations, including the park. So just to let you know that information is included in the document. Um, most of the ones that I saw were from on the site. And to be honest, I don't care what it looks like on the site as long as it's from your property. Um, land use, you kind of missed the boat on both our general plan and you missed the boat on surrounding land uses. Uh, directly across the street from FDC, there's a lot of commercial uses that you didn't even mention as existing. Um, and then um, the other issue that I'd like to talk about is the loop road on the site, um, that that be opened and available for recreational users as it was for many, many, many decades, particularly for use of people who reside in Harbor Village. They're low-income people. A lot of them have developmental disabilities. And um, in the interest of equity, you really need to keep that open as a recreational amenity for the people of Costa Mesa. Thank you. I am Mary Howard, and I have lived in Westside Costa Mesa for 10 years. I own a home not far from the proposed emergency operations center. I strongly oppose the development 
of the center here at the Fairview Development site. I anticipated from conversations that City Council had something to do with this decision, and I'm surprised that they're not here to see this. I'm sure it's, they, it's video. Oh, hi, I'm glad you're here, thank you. Anyway, lucky for me, I was told about this project, but there are many neighbors who know nothing about it. With a project of this magnitude, it is critical that the city makes the citizens aware of this project. That's one of the reasons we voted for you, because we trust you to tell us about the significant changes. The Emergency Operations Center would have many negative impacts if you build it on the site. Since my time is limited, I will only mention a couple. The site is part of the urban planning for housing by the city of Costa Mesa. I do agree, the space is more suitable for new neighborhoods, not emergency training centers. As I am sure you're aware, many of the citizens enjoy beautiful, the beautiful golf course and the Fairview Nature Park bordering the proposed site. The proposed 120-foot communications tower with continuously flashing red lights and a helicopter pad will create light and noise pollution. How would you like to tee off while a helicopter is landing? This is not the right location for the Emergency Operations Center. There are other locations that are more suitable, like the Marine Corps Air, Fair, Air Base in Tustin. Structures would not have to be destroyed if you have it at Tustin. And the existing buildings here could be used for community centers, including an auditorium that could be used for plays, concerts, truly making Costa Mesa a city of arts for the arts and the people. Thank you for your comment. Jack Lucas, Costa Mesa. Um, I think it's obvious that there's a lot of concerns about the helipad and, um, and rightfully so because it was poorly addressed in section two. There was just a short description of the flights limited to two a year. But then when it comes to how the helipad will be used during uh, disasters, it just says as needed. So nobody is really clear about, does that mean 100 flights a day, 1,000 flights a day? Um, what is the use of the helicopter? And it really should be put out publicly, um, how that use. And I can't believe that Dupac couldn't model that. I mean, there's an existing agency that's been used before, and why you can't model how much helicopter uh, use there will be. Um, so when it comes to section 4.10 noise, um, in the first table, 410.1, helicopters are not even listed in here. You have uh, examples of DBA levels for many different things, but not helicopters, medium helicopters, which is interesting because that's the point of concern with the helipad. And then uh, the report goes on to for pages, four or five to six pages, listing all the requirements, both federal, state, city, and council for helipads. But the report just makes that statement and then doesn't say how, how those are gonna be addressed, particularly the county. The county addresses uh, helipads starting with no decisions they're gonna made until there's an acoustic study. I'm not seeing that in there. I didn't read the whole report. Maybe there is going to be one. But um, uh, medium helicopters are very loud. And right now the Marine Corps, who could be used in disaster control, is transitioning to Ospreys, V-22 Ospreys, extremely noisy aircraft. So uh, I think more work needs to be done on the EIR, EIR to address the helipad. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. First, I just wanted to say, I'm, I'm Michael, Michael Ryan. Uh, thank you for coming out. I know it's kind of tough. You know, everyone has uh, 
you know, their opinion on this project. Uh, I just moved to Costa Mesa, so I live right here around the corner, right here at uh, 2775 Mesa. Uh, quick question, what, what is the advantage of this actually being here? Because you said you already had a facility that's up north. So what's the advantage of it actually being here in this particular location? Um, I have friends that are in OC as well. You have the hangar, which is, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the hangar in Irvine, huge facility that's still, I think, up for grabs, much bigger space. Why not that location? Right. I don't know. I just... No, th that's a real question. Like, okay, what is, so the first yeah. part of your question was... What, what's, the, what's the, well... Why here? Why at this location? Okay, well, okay, actually, no, no. Your first part of your question was why in Southern California? Why do we, why is the facility needed? Why is so it I here will... in Costa Mesa when you already have one up north? Like, so, what's the benefit of that? So, here? one, this is in the document, so I'm just clarifying. Um, there is a desire by the state to have, number one, a backup facility in the case that the Mather facility becomes inoperable. And number two, to have a facility within the southern region, which is highly populous, which has, you know, a lot of potential emergencies, floods, wildfires, to have those resources available in closer geographic proximity to these disasters rather than only the facility that's up in, in Northern California. That's fair. Okay. And, and then second was why this location? Irvine is 10 minutes away, maybe 15 Depending on, you take 405, get off on Jamboree. So right the, the, document, the document does discuss the process that the state went through to uh, narrow down and select properties, and it includes uh, a list of the different uh, criteria. This is state-owned property, okay. so that is a, a, one of the reasons that, that this property was, you know, that's all explained in the document, but this is state-owned property where the other properties you're suggesting are not state-owned properties. Okay, got it. And then just one more. There's a, is, does this have anything to do with the mental health campus that's here? Is Well, they're trying to propose that as well. Is this something completely separate? I'm not familiar with that. This okay. project is limited only to the Emergency Operations Center. Okay, all right. Thank you. Uh, Flo Martin, I live within four blocks of this facility. In fact, I walked over here. Uh, I live one house away from Fair Drive, which is uh, a truck route, uh, three blocks away from Harbor Boulevard, which is a main thoroughfare, uh, about three blocks away from Fairview Road, which is another main thoroughfare. I heard you say that there is minimal impact on the transportation facilities around here. I beg to differ. There will be major impact on the roads Fair Drive, Fairview Boulevard, and Harbor Boulevard. And I propose that there be more specific information about the routes that will be impacted by construction. Thank you. Hello, my name's Steve McNally. I'm a resident of Costa Mesa. I love the project. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I have a couple of concerns. One is, when you go to public meetings, you expect the communication to be uh, effective to the audience that shows up. I find this to be somewhat disrespective, disrespecting the community in the sense that I feel like an idiot sitting there, and I know you invited me, but how am I supposed to understand? You don't have QR codes, you don't have any documents of prior meetings, you don't have anything that would allow me to have context uh, not you personally, I don't mean at you personally, I mean uh, DGS, and uh, it's no, um, no sign language, no language, other languages. I mean, California's public meetings are, have requirements. So that's the first part, and I was at several I did today. just want to clarify that we did have um, Spanish translation available. Oh, where? You don't have to go back and forth anyway, that's okay. I looked out front when I walked in to see if there was any documentation. I didn't see any, so shame on me. Um, second is, I know the state controls the property. That's terrific. There's another piece of property in our county, the county controls, which is uh, 80 acres in Irvine. Um, there's two big pieces of property that can 
address uh, villages of Cabrillo type housing up in Long Beach, which is 1,500 acres on 20, 1,500 units on 25 acres. This seems to be out of context with what Governor Newsom's trying to accomplish. And I would have felt better if I could at least reference the prior documentation. I won't speak to any of the details except what I read in the paper, but it's a huge wasted opportunity. And I'm, I'm hoping that when I read that document, you're gonna tell me who owns the property at Red Hill and Victory. So I can, we can look into that. So thank you very much. I'm sort of upset and I express my concerns to our local legislator that the way this was done has been very, I believe, personally, very disrespectful to the community. It's not aimed at you, it's aimed at DGS who doesn't respect us enough to have a formal meeting with formal information that's communicated well so that we can be informed citizens and help the process along. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Hi, my name is Tom, and I'm here to advocate for the residents of uh, Costa Mesa, the developmentally disabled individuals who live in Harbor Village, because many of them came from Fairview and live over there, for the wildlife that I saw so much of over here, and for all the uh, suggestions that these people have brought before you. What I don't understand, and this is my question, is that in order to work together, what are you bringing to the table for us? There is no talk of any housing. There is no talk of using this auditorium as a cultural center. Goodell School is a community center. It's just that you want to have this done. There's no consideration for all the people that lived here that are familiar with this, that would like to still use it. And I'm asking, why don't you bring some of those things to the table for us? Do the cultural things. Nothing has been brought up about any affordable housing, any parks. You guys, there's a beautiful greenhouse and a beautiful park out there. Why isn't that given to the city? None of those have been addressed and you're not giving us anything except for all these massive plans. I ask, I beg, I advocate for all those people and those helpless animals that you do something and that you answer that question, please. Thank you for your comment. Good evening. Um, it's great to see everybody out. There was a, a few years ago, we all worked together, regardless of political party, to Wendy Lease, and we stopped the governor then from selling our fairgrounds. So it looks like we're still here to fight the good fight, the burrowing owl. Uh, one thing that you're not considering is that uh, if you discover that there's a burrowing owl, owl habitat, then everything is, is going to be put, going to stop because it's a federally protected bird. And the same thing with the Indian, with the indigenous peoples, if you discover something, then it's over. So you're taking a real big risk by starting to dig and demolish and, and really up, uproot everything. When this, you said, I didn't realize it, uh, that it's a historical district. Well, let's keep it a historical district. I'm disappointed that the state gave the city money to work on a housing plan, and then they kind of did a bait and switch to uh, add the EOC, and just this year. And um, there are many unknowns regarding the environmental impacts that I just mentioned. Tustin is a better site. Uh, let the state negotiate with the county. Um, <laughs> We have a very dense population. We're built out on either side. We have homes and we have apartments. And this is right in, in the middle of, of, of a very congested area. And we, the people, don't want it here. Um, the helicopter impacts, I think, have been really disregarded. What if there is an emergency and, and, and we're going to have all these helicopters and all, you know, 
that, that this is not the right place to put the EOC, and it's not fair to hardworking Costa Masons. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Cole. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to share. I, I really uh, just want to sort of reiterate some of the things that have been said uh, by other residents of Costa Mesa. And I read through much of the report ahead of time before this meeting. I appreciate what you shared this evening as well. But, um, you know, the things that really were surprising to me and I think were surprising to everyone else based on the comments were... Uh, the fact that, you know, housing, you know, that you listed that as something that is not of any impact, you know. And I was reading through the report and I saw that there, you know, you look at cumulative impacts and you look at cumulative impacts of this project coinciding with other projects that are happening around. And it's looking in a very short term frame of view from what I can see. And what I think about when I think about cumulative impacts is the cumulative impact of having this facility and the operations and the unknowns that Wendy just mentioned and what it will mean for the future of not only this area but for Costa Mesa. And it's saying, okay, this is great, you know, we need this center and we need it in a, in a densely populated area. Uh, I don't think any of us would agree that this is this is something that we necessarily want or would desire in our backyard and the priorities for us as a community are different. I understand the state has different priorities and, and uh, but at the same time you're sitting with us here and you're asking us what our opinion is. Um, and so my worry is the long-term impacts, the cumulative impacts of having a facility here and what that will mean for what could be in a really incredible site for the state and for the city of Costa Mesa, for lots of other beautiful things, um, for housing, for recreation, um, for the future of this city. Uh, I think all of us worry about, as residents, worry about, you know, what this will mean and then what it will prevent in the future. Um, so please consider that and, and uh, I would absolutely voice my, my recommendation to move this to a different site or maintain it where it is uh, happening currently. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Clinton Pace, P-A-C-E. I like this project. That's just me. But, you know, there's a lot of things out there. If everybody's thinking alike, then somebody's not thinking. You know, the one thing I'd like to know, though, if case of an emergency, how is this going to benefit me in Costa Mesa right here, this center being here? That's one thing I would sort of like to know. The other thing is, when is the project going to, when a decision is, I would like to know when a decision is going to make, be made, what is that timeline like? I've got a couple other notes. But um, people talk about the, the helicopters and everything like that. I mean, we've got an air show going on right now. If you want noise, I don't understand that. So I don't understand a few helicopters a couple times a year flying over. When there's an emergency going on, bring it. I want as many helicopters coming into Costa Mesa so I can come over here and hopefully get whatever I need to, for my family to survive. That's just me, though. I'm crazy like that. So I, I, I don't, I like this, the housing issue, I understand that. I get that. It's not just a Costa Mesa issue. It's a state issue, if not a nation issue. You know, but uh, building as many houses as we can on as little property as we can, I don't think is the solution to all that problem. That's just, like I said, just my opinion. I, I, as far as the antenna goes, I don't know. I'm going to have to go on the website, take a look, see what the pictures are. There's a huge one down the street, I think on 18th, a GNW towing, I think has one up. I, 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 I don't see the, you know, the obstacles of that. The one thing I would like to see, though, I do like the burning now. I like the animals in Costa Mesa. I mean, I, it's sort of funny, the raptors. and I mean, it, in my backyard, I've got coyotes and hawks. So I, it, the, the other thing is there is a, a problem with the burrowing owls or any other raptors or anything like that. 
why don't we build, why don't we anticipate that and then build for them like bird houses and hawk houses, bat houses, love to see more bats. And in our, we used to have a lot of bats in Costa Mesa, don't see as many as we used to. Screech owls, I don't hear, I hear burrowing owls, I don't hear anything about screech owls when I was a kid, we had a lot of those around here as well. You know, so why don't we try to mitigate some of that with, if we can, the state sort of think about that, what can we do to enhance our project? So Fairview Park also has like a bump or or a benefit of it just besides that um, thank you for directing or being sort of like that boltproof vest out there I don't think the comments were directed personally at you thank you for your time thank you for your comments hi my name is Susan I was a 27 year resident in Costa Mesa a five-year resident in Newport Beach I live at the end of 19th Street which is on the west side of Costa Mesa I saw in the, uh, the EIR that the flight path would be right over <laughs> where I live. Now, I worked all my life. I'm a first time home buyer. I bought it five years ago in a location that's completely surrounded by nature parks. Talbert Regional Park, it's a nature preserve. These guys are out there. I listen to them all the time. All the birds in the morning, all the birds in the evening. So if we talk about if there's an impact, right now these jets flying by my house. Now, and people tell me, well, Susan, the air shows only one time a year, right? Uh, Susan, it was only one time that Trump came over here to the state park and the helicopters flying around. I lived across the street from the state park. So I suffer from PTSD, and some people may think that's funny, but it really isn't. The anxiety attacks that somebody who has this condition is, it's indescribable, really. On Monday of this week, I did not know the jets were gonna come screaming by. I had no idea. It was a Jewish holiday, and I was sitting at my kitchen table, solemn, quiet with my prayer book in hand. And a jet came over. It scared the crap out of me. I mean, I screamed. I dived under, underneath my table, and then I realized, oh my gosh, it's the air show. We're okay. But there are many people that suffer from PTSD. The impact here does not only affect human beings with issues. It, it does affect these animals because now with the jets flying around the birds aren't there in the morning and the birds are not there in the evening and they're not going to come back until there's no jets flying over now you say okay Susan it's only a couple of helicopter trips per year here right that's only a couple of helicopter trips over my house at unexpected times I scare the heck out of me it's very serious right I moved there, I saved, I bought my little house. I, 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 it's a very quiet, peaceful area, and it's going to have a major effect on me. I'm not alone in this human story. I'm not alone. There it is. Hi, I'm Gary Bennett, um, longtime resident of Costa Mesa. I've lived here for 38 years now. Um, first comment I have is, I look at the people out here, how, how many people came to this uh, showing, and I was just told by the city councilman that we have over 100,000 residents in Costa Mesa, and this is our turnout. So I'm pretty disappointed in the communication of this whole project. I didn't find out about the project until last week. Maybe part of it is, is because I don't read all the city council meeting notes or anything, but I had no idea this was going on. I have been writing my local uh, state assembly and senators, as well as my federal representatives and senators asking what is going on with this property. Why hasn't this, this whole thing been shut down here, bulldozed, and start the housing project? I have had no response from any of my representatives whatsoever to my emails.
That's number one. I have a question for you. Um, we have an EOC center, you're saying, in Northern California. Okay, can you tell me um, how often that EOC operations center is really active, how many emergencies they have, what kind of emergencies they address, and what has been the last three major emergencies that they have had? I can't speak to the specifics of that. I don't have off the top of my head what the last three emergencies. They, they deal with emergencies that are severe to the point that state involvement is needed to support the recovery effort or the emergency effort. So you don't know what they do, is what you're saying. You, what's the last emergency they, they addressed? What was a big emergency? I, I, can, I can give you a list of the types of emergencies that they no, address. What, what, the actual emergencies that they have addressed. I'm wondering Wild, what the, why, wildfires? why do we need this, uh, this center here um, if, if we already have one as a backup? We're, talking, we're just talking a backup. What is that? Why do we need a backup? Is that one not enough? So, so the types of emergencies that Cal OES addresses, just to give you a list of a few, and you can also look up this information on their website, they deal with um, earthquakes, floods, significant wildfires, even things like prolonged drought conditions that you may not think of as a, you know, an immediate emergency. They can provide resources for things like that. Um, cyber attacks, animal disasters, homeland security threats. So there's a ver any, any time there's something that needs state support that's an emergency, that, that needs a coordination, that's the type of emergency that, that these centers address. And, okay, so how are they going to help our city? What are they going to do for us? How is this going to benefit Costa Mesa at all? What, what's the benefit? Your, your comment is noted. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Hello there. My name is Sue Lester. I'm a resident. I walked here. I have a few concerns that I want to mention, and then I just have a list of questions that obviously I don't expect you to answer right now. I left my email address up there, and if somebody can provide answers, I would be really excited because then I will share them with everybody I know. Um, the first concern I had was, and it's probably just your opening, um, that it, it's the contractor's job to support the state in this project on the EIR portion of it. I get a little leery of contractors because I always thought contractors should be hired for an independent opinion and not like make it work at all costs. So I'm a little bit concerned about that because I understand you have a job to do. If I can clarify that, that was only meant to say that we are supporting the C them in completing the CEQA process. Not that, uh, you know, okay. it's, 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 an, it's an objective, Okay. Analysis. You say that, so I'm just yeah. I'm just so saying, so like that just to clarify that our our it's an objective analysis pursuant to very specific requirements um, under CEQA, which is a, a state law. Okay. Um, some other concerns I had, and if you could put the slide up there with the that shows the items that weren't included, that were you know noise was one of them. I think the biology was one of them. Um, Th those were um, so you maybe just to go back. That, so oh, wait 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 back one. Here, these, these impacts were considered less than significant. So, so they were addressed in detail. Okay. It's just that the determination that was made after the assessment was that the impacts did not rise to a level of significance as defined under CEQA. Okay. Does that um, clarify that? It does, but I don't necessarily agree with it, but that's okay. Um, I would be curious in knowing what surrounds the Northern Cal OES Center, because I haven't made a decision on this yet. I'm a big picture kind of person. I understand the state of the world that we live in, and people are nuts. So we have to prepare for certain things, and I get that. And I'm not a, oh, well, don't put it near my house kind of person, if it makes sense. Like, I, I can see past all that. But I'm concerned about, there's one way in and out of here. Our emergency operations center for our city is located right down the street. Who's going to take care of our, wor our roadways? Is the city going to get stuck paying for whatever impacts um, it has on that. We, we have um, police and fire here. Are, are they just going to 
you know, sorry, we don't know what's going on over there, and whatever happens at the city level, the the city potentially could suffer repercussions of whatever the city, the state decides to do. There's a lot of people that are concerned about the gray area as it refers to the site will be used as needed for emergency operations when, I'm just gonna say it, nobody wants to say it, but I'll be the unpopular one that does. People are afraid that somebody's gonna say, we have a state in an emergency and we need to take a bunch of people that are homeless all over the state and bring them somewhere. We're gonna put them here. People are afraid that somebody's gonna say, we have all of these illegal immigrants and we need to put them somewhere and they're gonna bring them here. And I'm not saying that that's what's gonna happen and I'm not getting all wiggy about it. But these are conversations that are happening in our community and it really needs to be addressed. You listed the objectives that this project has, but are those objectives a, a moving target or are those objectives gonna change? And that's what people are concerned about. I guess at the end of the day, it's one of those things where just because you can doesn't mean you should. I know the state owns the property, but the testing site is a much better place for it. And if we are not setting ourselves up for success here because you, the state doesn't have to pay for the property, we're gonna end up with a Caltrans situation where all these meetings are held the whole, every city that the freeway runs through is against what they're doing and they're like, thanks for your input, but you guys can suck it because we can do what we want. Please don't do that to us. Hi, I'm Cynthia McDonald. I'm a Costa Mesa resident. I'm an officer of Costa Mesa First. And I've read the entire report. Um, Governor Newsom has issued two executive orders saying that any excess state land, which this is what that is, needs to be sold to developers to build housing. Now, this project started out as an eight-acre project, then it went to a nine-acre project, now it's 15 acres. I took a look at the, the Mather uh, site up there. It's a really big site. It's next to a business park. It's not next to residences. It started out as one building. Now they've got another building across the street. So you're putting a road to get in out here, to basically di bisecting a parcel, making it really hard to develop housing on it. Is that you're intending to then expand onto that other parcel? Yeah, I'd like to know. Um, yeah, selecting Costa Mesa and not taking the Tustin project or pro the property up there? How about land around the old Marine Corps base? It's open. You could do a swap with the developer that owns the land. Wouldn't cost you anything. Um, that tower. All the depictions of the tower, no, none of them show that it's painted orange and white. A lot of them cut off the top of the tower. They don't show the equipment on the tower. Go look at the towers, just go to Google Maps and look at the towers, two of them, at the Mather site. They're really big and they've got equipment stacked all on top. And, the, and you didn't take viewpoints that are important, like right over here on Joanne Street. How about the, go into somebody's two-story apartment and see what they're gonna see out the window. You pick the lowest point of Fairview Park you didn't go up to the train station or up on the hill by the homes to depict what that might look like, where we would really see it. We don't see anything from Harbor Boulevard. Uh, the helicopters, yeah, they are. They're 18,000 pound helicopters that, that seat 16 people. Um, we got resident, the roadway, you know, what else is going to be here? Um, EOC also handles homeland security issues. So they're going to be handling riots. Are we going to have riot gear? Are we going to have munitions stored in that warehouse? And you've got to put fencing all around this. It's got to be a secure location. I know one of the city council people said, oh, they, you know, maybe they'll park out on the golf course. No, this has to be a secured location for a reason. What's the fencing going to look like? Are we going to be looking at razor wire? Thanks. Thank you for your comments.
lot of my concerns have already been addressed. Not Would so you mind stating your name? Oh, Terry Fuquay. Uh, my comments, a lot of them have been addressed already, not sufficiently, but for the time being, it's going to have to stand. I want to know what Costa Mesa is going to get out of this. It sounds like, so far, the camel's nose under the tent flap. I want to know what's coming down the pike. Um, are we going to have improved roads around the area? Are we going to have mitigated land? What is Costa Mesa getting out of this? Are we going to increase our fire and police? I'd like to know what we get out of this. Thank you for your comment. Jay Humphrey, Costa Mesa resident. Um, I, I think this is a badly planned uh, project for a variety of reasons. Many of them have been addressed already here. But Costa Mesa, in its infinite wisdom, understood that the 405 freeway is a boundary. And if we have a major catastrophe, earthquake, uh, severe flooding on any other part, that stops anything from going back and forth. And you wind up by having trapped people on one side or the other. Costa Mesa required a fire station be built on the other side of the freeway so it could service its citizens whether or not that freeway was blocked in any way, shape, or form. That's not even in your plan. That problem, we were all around, not all of us, but a lot of us around were in 73, where part of the freeway fell down and blocked many, many roads. Just last year, part of the five freeway north of LA washed out, a catastrophe that can happen right here in Costa Mesa. That's not even looked at by your planning, which means if you build that project here and that happens, your mission is done because you have given up all of the people who live east of the 405 freeway for a project that could be there and actually service the vast majority of the population, more so than a limited population. So I'm against the project for all the reasons that have been said earlier by people uh, and question of the, uh, of the, of the uh, EIR. By the way, the tower that you made the comment, there is a rendition of it. If that tower turns out not to look like the rendition, i.e. it's more brightly painted, it's a little taller, it's a little more garish, will the state tear it down and rebuild it so it only makes that picture? Because the picture I've seen isn't the picture of what is proposed to be built. So all I'm asking, will the state tear down that tower if it doesn't meet the picture that they're going to sell the public on? Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Hi, my name is Portia. I've lived in Costa Mesa over 30 years. Um, I just want to agree with many people on my disappointment at the communication of this, which is not your responsibility, but I didn't really know about it until yesterday when I saw a flyer on a business. There was nothing delivered to the homes in Costa Mesa. So I think for something this important, every single home should have the opportunity to know. The second, the, I think we all feel that way. Um, and then the only other thing I wanna say is that everyone here, for whatever their reasons, it feels to me like we're all suspicious of this project. We don't at all understand the need or the purpose. I've lived here in Southern California all my life. As he said, we've had emergencies. We've dealt with them just fine. I don't feel like the state is going to be my savior in any emergency. I do not want or need the state to come down and rescue me. I think we locally do just fine. And so I'm suspicious as to why right now it seems so important and imperative, and this is not your question to you, but imperative at this moment, why we would need to take a sacred spot, a protected spot, a historical spot, to turn it into something for which we have never had a need. 
what is the need that's coming? I don't know. Thank you for your comment. Hi, my name is Katie Arthur, and I'm a 28-year resident of Costa Mesa. And um, the last speaker took the words out of my mouth in her first statement. I am really dismayed at the communication about this project. Um, in this city of this size, I can't believe these are the only people that know about this and they've shown up tonight, or that nobody else cares about this. And so part of my question is, what's the plan for communicating this project so that the entire city is aware? And I'd like to ask, because our mayor and my city council representative are here, what is the city, uh, our elected representatives, doing to protect your constituents and communicate to your constituents. My understanding is that this hasn't been discussed at city council meetings. I try to stay up on what's going on. I, but I'm quite sure that most of the residents have no idea that this is happening. And I think that's really a disservice to the residents of the city. We need to know so that we can take action if we want to. Thank you for your comment. Hi, my name is Hope. I'm a 15-year resident of Costa Mesa, and I live on the west side. I think it's a beautiful area with the parks. It's very residential. I don't know why that's the state would choose to put something that seems very industrial and commercial in the middle of a residential area. It seems like so short-sighted. There are other sites that are available that could take the, 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 the transportation, the extra transportation, Basically, the ruining of the view, which is a view, beautiful area near parks. Why do you want to ruin the view of something that we have that is very valuable to the residents here? The view shed in uh, Fairview is an excellent place to go for peace of mind and walking. And the state wants to put an industrial, um, an industrial basically, uh, facility in the middle of a residential area in a park area. It seems very short-sighted. I encourage the state to really think of another location that is not surrounded by residences and parks and golf courses. This would be prime residential area. We need housing. Let it be useful for something that we need in our city, not something that's industrial that could go anywhere in Southern California. It doesn't need to go in the middle of a residential area. I have been a resident of Costa Mesa since 2000. 15. I'm working on the homeless issue. That's my project. I am appalled at this, but I want to bring a piece of information that is not widely known because of your comment. Why did they choose this one? Because the state owns the facility. The state owns the land. Be quiet. Here's something. I'd like anybody that has a pen can write it down. It's bit.ly slash renewing dash Costa Mesa, renewing dash Costa dash Mesa. Initial caps only, everything else is lowercase. I have discovered in my research, and I've been forwarding my research to anybody who will listen, the Fairview property was acquired in 1949, 49 and 50, and it was, it was made to be for public use only. And the state has taken it over and they have Ill illegally and unlawfully converted it to private use only, and it gives them leave to do this sort of thing. And so my position is that we need to go, we need to, go to court and reclaim Fairview property, and I've, I've documented everything in that bit.ly link that I just told you bit.ly slash renewing slash dash costa dash mesa. The only initial caps are renewing costa mesa. Everything else is lowercase. 
I've documented my findings. I did the research at the um, museum um, of Costa Mesa, our Her Her Heritage Historical Society Museum. And back in 1960, the state started selling off these, their, their um, prop properties that were not being used for the, for the developmental center. That was illegal. The, the owner, the previous owner, filed suit and they went back and forth for 10 years. The state just waited him out until he died. And then they paid him off, paid his estate a million dollars. So that, and they, they um, just a minute, I'm gonna finish my thought. I real, I'm not used to public speaking. I realize I'm nervous, but I have an important point to make. The state, um, in 1960 started selling off these properties that they wanted to make money on and turned it unlawfully, illegally into private profit-making properties. That was unconscionable, it was unlawful, it was, it was unlawful. We need to go and reclaim the Fairview property the whole, not just the developmental centers, which is 115 acres, there, this, that whole acquisition was over 740 acres. And we need to reclaim it and bring it back to Costa Mesa and we'll do what we want to do with it. The state has no right, no right to do this or any of the other shenanigans that they've been pulling on Fairview Developmental and they, they are, they need to be called out on it. We need to reclaim our property and return it to the residents of Costa Mesa. Uh, my name is Danny. I live at uh, an upper Burge right on Oriole Drive here. Uh, my girlfriend went a few times ago. She lives on the west side. Um, I appreciate you uh, doing this. It's not easy. The reality is, is that this is not a dialectic, so I don't know why people are even talking to you. Um, I'm originally from Chicago. I've lived here for over 10 years now. Um, and uh, so I'm from Chicago, I'm from Illinois. And uh, I can tell you right now that this is an absolute hit job. Just like in Chicago, the corruption is rampant. The corruption in the state is rampant. There was no notice. We didn't even hear about this until a week or two ago. We have apparently 20 days until they're gonna just do what they wanna do. I don't even really know why they had this hearing at all. I do appreciate that one of the council members is here and the mayor is here. Tip O'Neill said all politics is local. This is a state hit job, okay? Once this thing starts rolling, because we're just a small city in this big state, it really won't matter on a state level but I do believe that it will matter on a local level, even though they, even though they don't really have any, anything to do with it or any say, apparently. I, I don't care about the environment part of it because they already built this and ruined a lot of environment here, right? No offense to the people that care about the environmental part, That's our, that ship has sailed. We need more housing, cheaper housing, everybody knows that, I'm not gonna repeat that. My point is, is that this is an absolute hit job. There should have been a referendum, a statewide referendum, even though it's just our little city, right? But this property is surrounded by all of Costa Mesa property. This is just a drop in the center of Costa Mesa. And everybody here got railroaded on this, and that's a fact. So it's not gonna matter on a state level but it will matter on a local level once they start tearing all this up and once they want to put in a giant tower and everything else. And I can tell you right now, from where I'm from, this stinks to high heaven. And I'm a liberal Democrat. I'm a Gavin Newsom guy. This is, this is like, I'm not saying it's wrong. I know we need facilities and I know we have emergencies and everything else. The reality, though, is that there are better locations for this, without question. I don't know why the blimp hangers haven't been knocked down. 
Donald Brennan has built everything around the blimp hangers, so now he doesn't want them knocked down and have it replaced by something like this, right? I'm telling you right now, this is a total railroad con hit job. That's it. So we'll see what happens. All politics are local in the end. Good evening. I'm a resident. My name is Karen. Um, and I appreciate you being here. I know it's not easy. I would have appreciated if there were representatives of the two state organizations that this is their joint project. I think it would have been fair to the community for them to stand up here as well with you. And on that note, since we're in a process and there's timing, I received notice of this meeting at 11 o'clock this morning through a text. So there's no time for me in this day to look at all of this information and have an informed comment, let alone be informed about this project. We're on a timeline till October 20th, 45 day review process. Is there any way to extend that review process? Is there any way for whoever's here representing the state and or you tell us what the next steps in this process? Because this is just the environmental response. It's not the decision making process. This has to fold into it. So is there somebody here that can address the timeline for this project? So like me, if I wanna make comments to whoever the powers at be are, I can do that in a timely manner. Thank you for your comments. Um, I'll, you know, my firm is only in charge of the environmental, which is one part of the process, as you said. Um, but uh, I'll see if I can get a, a timeline about the rest of, of the process. My name is Heidi Bressler, and I live near the Civic Center, essentially. Um, first off, if there's ever a meeting, again, can we not have it here? I have ample padding. These are the worst chairs possible. Secondly, if people are get all jacked up about, I mean, I hear the fire, the police helicopter go off however often it needs to. And occasionally it circles around because there's something that needs there to, they need to address. All you have to do is look on next door and people are insane. Why is it circling around? I can't hear final jeopardy. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a huge deal and that's a little helicopter. I grew up in Orange County. I grew, I've walked around the entire, when it was the, uh, Tustin Air Base, helicopter base, and I was a kid then, so they were not as big as they are now, and we always stop to look. It's just what you do when you see, you hear that military thump, 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 thump. It's so recognizable. This is just the wrong spot. I don't understand why you, what's wrong with Los Alamitos. I may have misheard, but I thought it, there was already some sort of a place there. What's wrong with Oceanside, the marine base? If you're gonna use this for wildfires, where are you gonna get the water? I don't, I, just, I don't see how it's feasible to move all of these, all this equipment in, and people are still, still supposed to do something, you know? A fire in the, wild, in the hills here may not affect my home, so I still have to get to work. I still have to do, go to the market. How is this gonna, how's it gonna work? I just, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Tomorrow is National Stupid Question Day, so make that part of it. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, and thank you for that interesting fact. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Margaret Sharp, and um, I'm opposed to this because I live right across the street. And there are hundreds of people that live in Mediterranean Village. Their windows, they're going to be seeing that bright light coming in their windows every night. As opposed, and then there's the people that live, sorry, yeah, people that live right over there that have developmental disabilities, they're not gonna be happy about this because anybody that has PTSD or suffers anxiety or whatever is not gonna like it. Then the new buildings that, the, just the new place that went up where Costa Mesa Inn used to be, those brand new luxury condos, those people are not gonna be happy if that goes up. And then you're interfering with the wildlife, you're gonna have all the construction noise, you're putting something right in the middle of this whole complex that's going to impact what happens to the rest of it. You know, you're gonna have noise and dust and all this stuff happening for who knows how long. 
And I don't think the, I just heard about this just before last Tuesday's meeting, a city council meeting. I went to the city council meeting. I was there for two and a half hours. This was the last item on the agenda. And I just couldn't stick around to wait to put in a comment. That's why I'm here tonight. But um, we need housing. And I've pushed for affordable housing for over seven years. And I canvassed for the people that are in the city council for affordable housing. And they keep changing it. And they keep changing their plans. And then all of a sudden, this comes in, which is like a turd in a punch bowl. And I'm not happy about it. Hi, my name is George Guerin, and I live a stone's throw away across the street, and I just got a door hanger last night. Um, I'm, a I'm also a local contractor. I do a lot of building throughout this whole area, and when I try and build a house or an addition, sometimes it takes two years. We have to meet, we have feasibility studies. I, I know what your purpose is. This has nothing to do with you. You're just giving the state, hey, look, this is, uh, here's your options. Um, but we go through a lot of these meetings just to do a small addition on a home. Um, we have the Coastal Commission, we have the city, we have HOAs, we have story poles, we have flags that fling in the air for a year. Um, 100,000 people in Costa Mesa, like the other guy said, and here's the turnout. Um, nobody here from Emergency Center to ask, who do we ask questions to? They're just the consultant. <laughs> um, there's no one here to ask questions. You, who, what are they going to do with this place? We don't know. Camp Pendleton down the street, 125,000 acres. That's not big enough. You've got to come right in the middle of a small little Costa Mesa city. Um, it, it's almost like they're trying to build a, a little, a little treehouse. Um, we'll just push this thing through, and here we go. We'll just throw it here. Um, another government facility, huge fences around it. No one knows what the hell's going on. <laughs> I mean, everybody has questions. Everybody that came up here had questions. She can't answer them. They're just a consultant. Where's the main people from the EOC? I mean, who are we going to ask? They're not here. We're just going to do it. <laughs> no one shows up. We're just going to do it. It's another government facility we have right in the middle of the city. Oh, but you and I can't build a shed, bro. We can't do we anything. Can't build a shed for it takes us two years to do something as just a small contractor trying to make a living. And this is a major thing happening here. And out of 100,000 people, this is who showed up. I just got a door hanger last night, and I live a stone's throw away. My backyard, the 10th green. And I just found out. So I don't understand. That's my concern is why is no one here from the OC that I can ask questions of? What's it going to house? What's going to happen here? What's the, the long-term plan? All I read was maybe a helicopter will take off twice a year. I mean, I, I'm a small contractor, and I have to give a whole list to the city of what my plans are. You're planning on putting a whole government facility here, and I got peanuts, like you're putting a park bench in. I mean, I think the people want to know more. Give us some answers of what's going to be here. What's the, what's the five-year plan of this place? What's really going to happen here in this small little city when we have Camp Pendleton down the street that's 125,000 acres? Plenty of room. Thank you for your comment. And I do encourage you to have a look at the environmental document to hopefully get some answers to those questions. Um, I'm Carlene Butterfield. I happen to be a resident of Newport Beach. Um, I'm very concerned about what happens to this property because it's state property. Um, I'm very, very suspicious of politicians. And in my suspicion, and I have no facts to back this up, but I'm thinking that possibly part of this is being created to as a red herring so that people will fight this and say yes we want housing and the next thing we know the state office the governor's office who says we need more housing will be selling this property to their campaign donors for housing for high profits and I've seen things like this happen I've worked for developers I like developers I liked what they used to do I'm not a fan of what's going on in big development situations and where the state, this is a state treasure, this 100-acre parcel. I don't know that the helipad is um, a good idea, but the state should keep this and use it for wonderful uses for the state, make it additional parks, make it available for some 
health facilities, some regional health care. There are a lot of things that the state could do, but once it's gone, once the property's been sold to somebody for profit and it's gone, then the next thing, some, the state's going to come along and say, oh, we need 100 acres in Costa Mesa to put something else that we need, and they can take it by eminent domain without asking anybody for anything. I know this goes on. It's going on a lot in Newport Beach. I've seen it with my own eyes, where valuable properties are being given to people at discount prices because they're friends of politicians. <clears throat> Hello, my name's Allison Wright. I'm a resident here in Costa Mesa, and um, I'm hesitant to speak. I was here to gather information. I was told by a friend of what was happening, and we started to spread the word. Um, just before the meeting, we noticed who was attending, and we're a little disappointed not to have more residents and more advocates, and I think a big part of that is because, again, it's been said before, the not being aware, so I want to know when, and this is, again, a question that's not going to be answered, but maybe followed up, um, when residents will be notified of this taking place. Um, I also want to just reiterate it without going into everything that's already been said, but the fact that every voice does count, and the, again, emphasizing the importance, um, and those who can't speak. So we've talked about what this has been used for, um, this disabled, the um, mentally um, handicapped, also children and um, elderly, and again, there have been, it's been said again, but I'll just say it again, it seems like there are better alternatives than a residential area. Thank you. I'm Sally Humphrey. I'm a 42 plus year resident. And John Stevens, our elected mayor, I would like to hear what our city feels about this and what are they doing to support us. Can you talk to us on this mic tonight? Well, you have everyone here. Please. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I have nothing prepared, but thank you for the invitation, Sally. I appreciate it. I do. Yeah. So uh, let's see. We're meeting on Tuesday. To, to, we've got a comment period that we have to make some comments. So the city council is meeting. I, I can't speak for the city council. You know, we have to vote and formulate our position. I'll say that this site has been um, allocated for housing. It's part of our housing opportunity site. We've been working for a couple of years with the DGS to try to get a housing plan. We've been provided a grant to do that. We're in the process of doing it. And so what I think I'd like to see the state do is work with us in cooperation to try to meet Governor Newsom's highest priority, which is housing. Um, I, I came here mostly to listen. I really want, do want to understand more about what exactly is happening here. I think those questions were very good. What do we expect? Not as much as, you know, people come up and they talk about how it's going to affect the current residents. But what I'm more concerned about is if we look at this site, which is 113 acres, and we look at the opportunities we have to address the concerns, not just of Costa Mesa, but the state of California, and I just feel like we're moving forward on this project without looking at how it affects the holistic part of, of the, 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 the property, the asset that we all have as Californians and as Costa Masons. Um, it was my anticipation and expectation when we got the $3.5 million grant and we began um, discussing this with the state of California a number of years ago, that we would work in partnership with the state in achieving our mutual goals. And, 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 and what it is, seems to me, and it's just my impression, and now I'm really speaking, of course, as the mayor, but as a, as a resident 
of both the state of California and the city of Costa Mesa, that the state is going through this kind of unilaterally without really engaging the city of Costa Mesa to the extent that I would expect. I think that's what you're hearing, a lot of frustration. Um, you know, I, I, there, I'm not entirely sure what the hurry is. I mean, as somebody mentioned, we've gone now since uh, whatever, since the gold rush without uh, uh, an EOC here. Why are we rushing forward with this phase of the project without looking at the entire thing? And the last thing I'll say is this, because I didn't finish my thought. When we talk about housing and we talk about the impacts of this particular project, the, the question is, you know, how is that going to affect the marketability and the habitability of the people that we want to have come here? We've been imposed an arena number uh, of 11,760, 4,500 4, of which is affordable. That was imposed on us by the state of California. We're part of the solution in Costa Mesa. I'm not sure you, if you're aware of this, but we just passed a thing called Measure K to try to make sure that this opportunity site, housing opportunity site that's in our housing element can be developed in a way that makes sense to achieve our RENA goals. And, and it just doesn't seem very collaborative that agencies of the state are moving forward uh, in a way that appears to be inconsistent with what the mandates have been from the state and what we're trying to achieve based on those mandates. Um, so we're trying to do our part as a city to address the housing crisis. Um, I'd like to, us to work with the state and just slow down on this project and let us work in a way that is collaborative and also has a cohesive plan for this site. Because as so many people said, you know, once it's built, it's over. You know, you pave paradise, you put up a parking lot, it's over, okay? Um, there, I don't see the rush. I don't see why we're moving so quickly. If there is a reason for that, I'm open to hearing it. I'm open to these discussions. But I can tell the public this. I'm working on a, um, a letter to the governor. I know the governor. And um, if I have to, and I plan to, I guess, is get on his calendar and go up to Sacramento and have a discussion with Governor Newsom. You're a private firm, right? Or a private consulting firm? Correct. Right. So you don't, you're not like the actual decision maker. So who will we actually speak to for to oppose it or approve it? Who would you, what, what email or QR code, who, who would you have for that? Because I mean, like you have this, but you're right. hired this is, by this. The, is, this is specific just to the environmental process. Right. So yes, I, under, I understand what by, you're saying. Right. You're hired by the state. Yes. So who would we actually submit to to either approve it or not approve it is the question. Uh, I think Jason spoke to that a little bit earlier. Who's you, Jason? Uh, I don't know who Jason is. Jason you? Cool. So is do a you representative. Have, so let me ask you, Jason, do you have that information? And if you do, could you provide that so everybody can... Yeah, as was stated earlier, the, the Office of Emergency Services is the one who approves the environmental document. I actually don't know who in that office um, will actually be signing their name on it, um, but it, it will be that office. They have a director. Um, um, you, could, you could go to the website, uh, www.caloes.ca.gov. Um, there's an about page that'll tell you who their executive team is. Um, but yes, they, they will be the ones ultimately approving it. Um, you can send your uh, lobbying through uh, the uh, name there, Terry Ash, uh, who is our senior environmental planner. All of that goes into the record of the EIR. Every comment has to be addressed and responded to. Um, and so that will all happen there too. Cal OES will obviously see those as part of the review of the final documentation as well. So this would be a valid um, opportunity to express those thoughts and concerns that they will see. Um, and that would be the, the normative channel under CEQA to do that. Okay, cool. Thank you. And then also just real quick. So is it, let, is it 
up to vote and then for approval or, or non-approval. So let's just say, you know, they said it's 100,000. I mean, it's just like, uh, I don't know who said, I think he said it earlier. He got something on his door. I got something on my door too. And that was the only way I actually showed up here. Uh, I'm in flooring, I'm, you know, so I understand what you're saying. It's a lot of um, things that need to happen in order for something to get approved if you're in construction. And this is just kind of like, we're gonna do it anyways. Or, so I don't know, how does that, uh, yeah, how does that work? Yeah. I, I, without without um, without without critiquing uh, local governments in general, most of those headaches and hangups you're talking about are self-imposed. Um, at the state, we follow the law as it's written, um, and so it does feel a bit more streamlined compared to local approvals of things. And, and to be perfectly honest, that said, um, there is not a an elected body that certifies EIRs. It is the, the departments whose project is being put forward. So yes, th there's not a public vote, there's not a referendum, there's not a elected governing body who makes a vote and then it gets done. It would be the person at OES, someone in the executive team, I would imagine, who's going to be ultimately making that decision based off of the environmental review and based on CEQA as a body of law. Well, you're they, supposed I, to have I, three minutes, but I'm okay. not keeping a tally, so. Um. Mr. Mayor, thank you for coming out. But the, you, this meeting should be held at the fairgrounds and at the amphitheater. The city of Costa Mesa should have let everybody know we should be packed on this. Once again, the city dropped the ball, in my opinion, just like night they did on 19th Street and Newport Boulevard, letting the community know. Mr. Mayor, I hold you responsible. Please let us know in the future because this is not really the way that the city should be run. On that note of the communication and information, it is required by CEQA for you to notice people. So how was that notice sent to sure. the city, you know, the adjacent, is it done by square footage, you know? It, the requirement is a 500 foot radius around the project site. Um, we went farther than that. We noticed to all the residences that are um, on this side of Harbor Boulevard directly with mailers. Um, we also sent an email to anyone who requested to be um, notified per, through the website, which you can do, by the way. You can request to be notified about this project through this website. We notified anyone through email who left their email address at the scoping meeting and also uh, local elected officials and the city and, I'm tr I mean, I'm... Yeah, so is that feasible? So that's my request for, in addition to putting something in the newspaper, because not- I was gonna say, there was also a newspaper notice in the OC register, but right. I mean- and, and I believe you're supposed to post the area as well. It's also posted with the county clerk's office. Yeah. As so legally required. Obviously not enough, so we're a little bit out of sync in communication, right? So to, to bridge that gap, what mechanisms does a state have through you to notice everybody in the city of Costa Mesa, so we're informed. Thanks what, for your. What mechanism do you have? That's something that's going to have to be discussed, and something that okay. well, I can't to speak to. But but I but okay. I I understand your comment, and, and it's in the record. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, anyone else want to speak? Okay. With that, I'm going to officially close. Okay, we got one more. I would ask that. Um, next meeting, if there is a next meeting, and hopefully there will be a next meeting, that uh, the representatives from the emergency services and the general services, those other two departments that are actually making the decision on this project, be in attendance. As far as I'm concerned, the state employees hung you out to dry here tonight. Because you're on the environmental, uh, doing the environmental impact report. You're not a state employee, you're a contractor, consultant, they should have been here introducing this project, giving some top-level information to the, res to the residents here, the attendants here, and then go into the environmental and report, and impact report results. They should have been here and speaking and introducing this project and answering a lot of the questions that were, that were asked because you're not the person to answer some of the most of the questions that were asked here. So this is an environmental impact report and tells us what's going to happen to the environment. 
what's the financial impact? Is somebody going to give us a report on how is this financially going to impact this city of Costa Mesa? You know, I asked in my NOP letter, uh, please tell us if you're going to provide jobs for people. If you're only going to have 50 employees, it doesn't sound like we're getting much out of this financially. Thank you. I kind of want to clarify something that uh, Mayor Stevens said about our, uh, our housing element update that's dictated by the state, uh, state agency, housing agency, for 11,700 more units in the city. That uh, requires a, dense, a significant upzoning throughout the city, increasing the densities for residential residences. And so uh, John mentioned the, pass the passage of Measure K. And so just to clarify that a little bit, in, in, in 2016 there was something called Measure Y passed. And what it did was is it required uh, a citywide vote to approve any kind of major uh, zoning change for large projects. What Measure K did was it, it, it passed sort of barely was is that it modified Measure Y, and what it did was it excluded all the, uh, a, a significant number of major uh, commercial corridors and most of the area of the city north of the 405 freeway, that now it only requires uh, a, a city council approval, no more vote of the people. So the densification that's going to take place in the, in the and the master planning that needs to take place for the next three or four years while they get ready to upzone everything included Fairview Developmental Center. So the planning process is just beginning for this area. And my dream would be that, you know, a significant uh, village type atmosphere could take place here in, in, in this unique area here and we could save this building maybe a few others and and so i was going to be look forward to advocating for for a you know professional uh, uh, citizen involved planning for this area and this operations center is like throwing a bomb in the middle of this process so now we so now we have to try to design the redevelopment of, of this area around a big industrial complex. It just doesn't make any sense at all. So the city, the, the state could simply trade some of this land for another one. I mean, you know, they could sell this and buy a, a commercial uh, area in another area of Southern California. This operations center is, it was explained to us to serve 22 million people in Southern California. It's a big thing, and I can appreciate that they need it, but uh, the, the, the state agencies up in Sacramento, one hand doesn't know what the other one is doing, don't they? So they're here they're demanding housing, but then the, op, the operations, uh, emergency, the, uh, the, the, all these agencies up there don't know what's going on locally. So. Can you state your name? I'm sorry. Uh, Jordan, yeah, uh, resident here. Uh, the, the piece of mail I got was white, envelope, nothing addressed on it. Had to open it up, white again, open it up, chose a map, um, wanted to be here. But off that point, someone else said that there's only one way in, one way out. Is there going to be rerouting? So if you look at the transportation section, you will see the, the proposed access into and out of the site. Can you restate that or just um, let me know? So. Because there's this Harbor Boulevard and then. Uh, so there's Harbor Street right here and then this is one way in, one way out. So what, you mean, what's uh, you mean on, down onto Fair Drive? Yeah, so will there's. they have access? There's a fence that they open during the uh, day time right here and then it goes in. Do they own this apartment complex too? So that's gonna be, that's gonna be the reroute probably and so you're gonna have 
both directions. And, and so what kind of like security, are there gonna be security gates? Are we gonna be able to walk around as you do right now? Within the property, it will be secured. Within the 15 acre site, it will be So where does secured. that start? Because uh, Mark Lane, I believe, is state property and then it goes Cornerstone and then Harbor. So I'm saying- I can actually When like, the COVID happened, they, they put barricades right on Mark Lane, right before Mark Lane. Um, and then where are there gonna be barricades? Probably, I don't know what that does to those apartment complexes. So this is the main access point off of Harbor. Um, there are gonna be some improvements to this section of the existing road. Sure. And then a new roadway segment going down here to but the site. That won't be accessible like it is right now through the public. I mean, it's gonna be blocked off right where that green starts, correct? This portion will be, the portion in the red will be a secured site. Perfect, okay. And so are they gonna plan on putting parks or anything kind of just, uh, people brought up employment, you know, people are gonna be living here, you know, is there going to be family stuff? This, pro uh, as it's currently proposed, the project is limited just to the EOC within these 15 acres, sure. secured, and, and these roadway improvements. I, I think you mentioned it, just clarification. Did you say that at one time the California legislature did vote to fund this project? Let me answer that and then also may maybe talk about the larger site because it, it is separate from the project, but it seems to be a decent bit of confusion about it. So, uh, answer your question uh, twice. Um, th these projects are funded in phases. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's based on the delivery method of the, the construction, and so this is a design-build project. It's a two-phase project, two runs to the legislature, so yes. And it, it, did say, twice. it did say this property in Costa Mesa when it was voted on by the legislature. Uh, the second time, yes. The first time was a while ago. I don't remember. Um, How long ago did they vote for this? The second phase was, uh, I'm sorry, the second one was in this last budget cycle. Uh, the one, it was the budget cycle prior to that. So was proper notification given to the city of Costa Mesa that we knew that this was being voted on? We didn't, we didn't have any opportunity to, to represent ourselves and represent the community. That's one point. But I think it is a big concern that th there is one way in and one way out. And, and that isn't very smart, for one thing. And see all those apartments there? There's a, a nice bike trail there by the golf course. Those are all um, on Joanne, and, and those are all summer apartments. Also, it's, it's, we talk a lot about equity. That's not really fair to put something that close to a, an already dense low-income area. And, and so the, the selection of that it, it counters, it's, it's kind of hypocritical of, of uh, when, we when everything's got to be equal and fair for everybody, that this is, is a negative for that um, community, which is, is a minor, mostly a minority. So those are my comments. So, so just maybe, uh, sorry, you can feel free to sit down, please, but just kind of going back to that larger. Um, so in, in 2022, so starting in July 2022, it would have been in the previous year's budget cycle taking effect in July of 22. Uh, there was um, uh, significant budget language written that did two things. One, it uh, created a planning framework for the balance of the property. So anything that is, is not redeveloped by the state um, is uh, part of this planning framework. And then it gave money to the city of Costa Mesa to do a specific plan. So Costa Mesa has funding to go through their own planning and environmental process, and whatever that looks like here locally, to essentially create what the balance of the site is going to be. Um, and then the property would ultimately be sold, the balance of the site would ultimately be sold uh, in an open market transaction to, in accordance with what the city plans on doing for the balance of the site. So one of the reasons why the consultants and others you know, can't really speak to what's going to happen is because it is ultimately up to you all uh, and, and the city 
Um, I will say that planning framework was uh, explicit in its goals. It was heavily affordable housing focused. Um, um, it was, there were some, some infrastructure studies that were done a few years prior that identified kind of reasonable caps on housing uh, based on transportation impacts, and the legislation reflects that. It reflected permanent supportive housing, housing for folks with developmental disabilities, um, open space, and the like. Um, but there was legislation passed that created that framework, gave money to the city, um, and that is a process that's outside of this, that is run by the, by the city itself. Um, and um, it, will, it will determine the rest of the campus. Thanks. I did want to say we're starting to get into where people are coming up multiple times. Um, so you can say your last comment and then we're, we're going to have to cut it with people coming back up multiple times and please put anything else that you feel that you didn't get to say um, in a written comment. Okay, I would uh, appreciate it if you would address in the ER, EIR the impacts and or compatibility with the city of Costa Mesa's general plan and their zoning and all the efforts that, any coordinated efforts that they've had with the state of California of what these impacts would be on those plans. Thank you. Um, I just have one quick comment. Um, I noticed, I heard something recently that um, the city of San Clemente um, was proposing to use part of Fairview for their affordable housing. Why don't we switch the tower to San Clemente and then do the affordable housing here? Thank you for your comment. Okay, with that, I'm going to officially close the oral public comment portion of this meeting. Um, I thank you all for attending and being part of this process. I, we really encourage you to also provide written comments. Um, again, accepted all the way through 6 o'clock on October 20th. All right, thank you all for being here.